Hello on full person, this is Anton, and well, today, since I'm wearing my James Webb Space Telescope t-shirt, we're going to discuss one of the most incredible pictures captured by the JWST that you can kind of see behind me. The picture of the system known as WR140. Something we've actually discussed in one of the previous videos, but something that's worth discussing again, because we now have another study that has actually conducted additional observations and additional analysis producing something absolutely incredible and also confirming exactly what this system is and what we're actually looking at here. And so let's actually discuss what this is, why this is absolutely incredible, and why this actually confirms what we basically know about the evolution of galaxies and evolution of stars, while also connecting this to one of the recent videos and one of the recent studies we've discussed in regards to how carbon circulates across the galaxy, leaves the galaxy, sometimes comes back, and sometimes forms star systems and planets, with at least one of these planets eventually forming life and basically you and I. In other words, this is actually connected to one of the recent discoveries on how carbon travels in a galaxy. But what exactly is this, and what are those weird wavy shells? Well, even though this might look like some kind of a refraction effect, or some kind of a halo from basically looking at this with a lens or with some kind of a glass, in reality, this is a physical object. These layers are real and they're kind of mind-blowing, and we finally have a direct proof, once again from JWST. And here's that incredible proof, a visual confirmation that these bizarre layers are moving and moving really fast, approximately 1% of the speed of light, and are basically expanding away from the center where this binary system is located. And this is observations from just one single year, but something that was invisible to us until the James Webb Space Telescope. But in this case, what this observation confirms is of course what we kind of suspected from the beginning. This star system, for some reason, is throwing off huge shells of material, which seems to happen every 8 years, with each of these shells traveling across space at approximately 2700 kilometers per second. And the only reason we see them is because the light from the star illuminates them, producing tiny reflections visible from a distance. And so basically here we have this very bizarre system producing huge amounts of dust and huge amounts of material periodically blown into the universe through these massive emissions. But this is a really important observation because this finally confirms what the scientists always predicted. This system is a typical example of a cosmic dust production that enriches the galaxy with a lot of materials including silicon and carbon that's then responsible for forming planets and for forming life. And in this case, produced by a very unusual type of stars known as Wolf Rea stars. Once again, one of the videos in the description talks a little bit more about this, but in a nutshell, a Wolf Rea is a type of an extremely powerful, very bright, very hot star with very specific emission lines that very often form some of the hottest objects in a galaxy. This one, for example, is 200,000 Kelvin responsible for ridiculously powerful radiation, making these stars so bright that the pressure from the light itself starts to basically throw off huge amounts of dust from around the star, making the outer layers evaporate over time. But intriguingly, most of the radiation is not in optical light, it's in the ultraviolet light. That's because they're actually so hot. And so instead of being super bright to our eyes, instead they start to illuminate a lot of gas around themselves, which usually produces a lot of different emissions depending on the atoms and the molecules involved. And in many cases, most of this gas came from the star itself, with huge amounts of oxygen, nitrogen, silicon and carbon almost always visible in these emissions. As a matter of fact, one of the main definitions for a typical wolf Rea star is the fact that they usually contain more emission spectra than absorption spectra. Or basically they're so bright that everything around them starts to glow as well. All of this the result of very powerful ultraviolet radiation that creates a lot of really bright effects in the spherical formation around the star. And so approximately two decades ago, back in the early 2000s, some of the ground-based telescopes were able to discover this new Wolf Rea star that seemed to possess two separate layers. And it was actually the Keck Observatory that discovered the first couple of shells around this unusual star. This was WR140. But almost right away there were hints of additional shells that were just extremely difficult to see. And mostly because these were not optical shells, these were only visible in the infrared. And because this was the 140th Wolf Rea star, it became known as WR140. And so the UV light from the star heats up the gas so much that it then starts to re-emit infrared light, producing these shells. 
And so once we had the most powerful infrared telescope in existence, James Webb Space Telescope, everything suddenly changed. Oh, look at that, there is a telescope just like that on my t-shirt that you can find in the description. Uh, shameless self-promotion. Anyway, on a more serious note, some of the first images of the star from the JMWST basically uncovered 17 shells as opposed to just two. But much more importantly, each of these shells seemed to be separated by a relatively similar distance. And though at first researchers thought that maybe this is an artifact of the observations and just something that infrared light produces in this cloud, eventually they realized that this is a physical object and, more importantly, it was moving. And so additional observations for several months revealed that first of all this contained huge amounts of carbon, this was also moving at 2700 km per second, and it seemed to happen every 7.9 years. Which almost right away provided us with an explanation. This was basically an eccentric binary system. Or a system with two massive stars, one of them a wolf Rhea star, that once in a while approach each other so closely that the gravity between them produces tidal effects and potentially throws off huge amounts of dust from the wolf Rhea star, which are then emitted at very high velocities, spreading away from the system faster and faster. Or at least that's one of the first explanations we have for now. Because in reality it's still not certain why these concentric shells are formed in such a perfect way and why there is so much coherence and symmetry between them, even though we expect these emissions to be much more sporadic and much more chaotic. But intriguingly these recent observations basically confirm the velocity and also the fact that initially these shells are moving just a little bit slower. They actually start with approximately 1800 km per second, but then seem to accelerate by 400 km per second every single year, with that acceleration decreasing away from the star, because it's the photons from the star that cause the acceleration. So basically the star produces enormous radiation pressure. And in this case, based on the number of shells, we're actually seeing approximately 130 years of emissions that have not changed much over time. And so this very strange episodic dust formation, and this is by the way the only such system we've discovered in the entire galaxy so far, seems to directly confirm how a lot of carbon and a lot of more complex atoms seem to form across the galaxy and seem to spread across the galaxy, eventually leaving the galaxy for just a little bit before coming back, colliding into large clouds and restarting the star forming process once again. And you can learn more about that in one of the recent videos in the description. Likewise, this is now a prototype for what's known as a colliding wind binary, which represents a star system with two massive stars whose interaction very often produces stellar winds with very periodic and very powerful emissions. And actually one of the most iconic such stars is Eta Carina. You can learn about that star and its bizarre emissions in one of the videos in the description as well. But this recent study by Emma Lieb and her team does actually make a few additional discoveries. First of all, there is finally a confirmation that a lot of this dust seems to be really clumpy, in some cases even forming relatively large chunks, which is extremely likely the result of wind collision from the interaction of these two stars. And here the observations confirm that there are even certain substructures inside these shells that seem to survive for at least 14 months, implying that this interaction forms relatively stable structures, all containing huge amounts of carbon. And more importantly, we now have evidence for what's known as PAH or polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are known to be extremely stable and are also technically responsible for a lot of organic molecules on planet Earth and are very often claimed to be the starting material for a lot of different stuff that eventually formed life on Earth. So basically here we have a kind of a life precursor in action. On top of this, there is now a confirmation that there are much older shells as well, but the shells that are just a little bit too difficult to see and are just too dim to detect. We basically have chemical evidence, but not visual evidence. Lastly, there is even evidence for huge piles of gas and enormous piles of dust, essentially forming these huge amorphous clouds, in some cases even as large as the solar system itself. But in this case moving just a little bit too fast to become an actual star system, with all this gas eventually making it outside of the galaxy before coming back in billions of years. And so in essence here we're observing the birth of future star systems and future planets that might form in the Milky Way in the next few billions of years, once this gas goes around in a circle and falls back into the galaxy through this unusual process of recycling of gas that seems to be present in pretty much every galaxy we've seen so far. 
but because this is a wolf ray star, and because it most likely started as a star with 25 solar masses in total, it is eventually going to possibly explode. So basically, it might produce a supernova, or, depending on the conditions, it might also just become a black hole collapsing directly. Either way, whatever happens, it's most likely going to release even more gas for thousands of years, eventually releasing at least half of its mass as these bizarre spherical shells. And the calculation from the study essentially suggests that over hundreds of thousands of years of the existence of this system, it's most likely going to generate tens of thousands of these dust shells, basically spreading away from the center, becoming less and less visible over time. And so approximately 13 solar masses of gas from within the star is at some point going to end up on the outskirts of the Milky Way inside its halo, before coming back for another round and potentially forming actual planets. And so here this bizarre binary system finally provides us with actual physical proof that shows us the process of enrichment and process of formation of complex elements, and also shows us how huge amounts of carbon and silicon end up in the outskirts of the galaxy inside its halo. And so for astronomers this is a really important observation and not just some kind of a cool picture, even though it is a cool picture. But it's really this time lapse or this tiny video that's basically the highlight of this new study. And so super cool stuff, really cool discoveries, but I'm sure we'll come back and talk more about this in the next few years because more and more observations will be conducted of this star since this is such a fascinating object. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description with the James Webb on it. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.